Today I want to share a book with you that is part history, part quilting, and just oh so very interesting. Hi, I'm Kim Jamison Hurst of Chatterbox Quilts, and today we're taking a look at Pinecone Quilts, Keeping Tradition Alive by Betty Ford Smith. Now, I've been waiting for this book to come out for about a year because I saw Betty do a virtual presentation about that long ago and she was showing her pinecone quilts and she was talking a bit about the technique and she said she had a book coming out. So I have been waiting for this book and let me tell you, it was worth the wait. So I said it was part history and part quilting because she talks about how she got into making these pinecone quilts and there is a history behind them. So here's an example of some of the projects that you can make in the book. But she talks about this lady she met called Miss Sue. Now her real name is Arlene Dennis, but she was an older lady and she was making these quilts. She'd been making them for a long time. And Betty got interested in them and started making them with her. I'm not gonna go into all the, the history there because you'll need to get the book to read all that. But it was very fascinating for her. And I've gotta say, I've never seen a quilt like this either. And so I was fascinated by you know, what this was all about, what was the history behind it and everything. So you can see a picture of Miss Sue here, a couple of pictures of her here. And she made these all by hand. And as we get further into it, you will realize how amazing <laughs> that is. But when Betty was doing her research into this type of quilt, she was looking at the history, where it came from in the Southern United States, which led her to Guy's Bend, because it's a similar um, kind of aesthetic, if you will. And then she started researching even more. So this is like the history part of the book, which is absolutely fascinating. I knew nothing about these types of quilts, which, which have different names actually too. And so I read all this before I even started looking at the quilting process because I just found it very, very interesting. And there's cultural um, origins for this as well. You can see ties in with African art um, and even buildings architecture. You can see it in with art artists as well, as you can see in this type of a, a photo that, or I should say an art piece that's at the White House as well. So, you know, it's you start looking into things and there's more and more and more that you find out. So it really brings a lot of meaning into the type of project you're making. So here's another uh, example of one of the quilts that Betty has made absolutely beautiful and what's interesting about these quilts is the fact that they're all handmade so that was the first thing so when she goes into how to make it it's all handmade it's all sitting on your lap working away you know with your hands and I just can't imagine how long it takes to make these I know how long because she tells you in the book but it's you know it takes a while for sure to make them so Betty has actually had her quilts on display. She's given presentations at different places as well about these quilts, educating people about them. And I'm sure that they've been well received because they are stunning. So she also has a collection of quilts that she's showing in this book, some of them anyway. And some of these are older, like this one, for example, from 1920, 1949. So you can see these have been around for quite some time. This one here was made in the 1930s, approximately 1930s. And, you know, when you look at these, you can see that these are kind of scrap quilts, if you will. They're using small pieces that are folded and stitched together, uh, stitched onto a base, I should say, onto a foundation. But you can see that there's a lot of thought going on here. We're using the same colors, same fabrics, I should say, in these different rounds to give this vibrant kind of a bullseye effect. Here are some more that you can take a look at. I think these are really interesting when they've got them in the center on a background. Again, that's from somewhere in 1980 to 2000. It looks a lot older though. I think it looks like an antique quilt. Here's a close up of purple Cattell that uh, Betty has made as well. And I said you had to make these all by hand, right? They go on a foundation. What I didn't mention is how heavy they are. So this particular quilt weighs, wait for it, 29 pounds. Okay, so she's making weighted blankets before they were even a thing, right? <laughs> All right, so you can imagine sitting there with, you know, over 20 pounds of quilt on, you're still working away on it. This particular one here is called the Green Pinecone Quilt. It weighs 28 pounds, so a little bit lighter, right? <laughs> a little bit lighter. This is one that Miss Sue made, or Arlene Dennis made. Um, this quilt, just to give you an idea of the size, is 62 inches by 112 inches. So these are pretty big quilts. All right, don't worry. The projects in the book aren't quite that large, <laughs> okay? So, for example, this one here that Betty made is 23 and a half inches square. Okay, so you want to start with something small when you're learning a new technique. I think that's a great idea. And uh, she has some smaller projects in the book as well. But I wanted to share some of the gorgeous 
quilts that she's made. This one is only eight inches square. So you're starting with some very small pieces. So yeah, there's lots of thinking that goes on in these. And you can see here, like these are more modern fabrics, right? Um, as opposed to ones like the ginghams that you might think are more, you know, kind of vintage look. Not that you can't get them still, but it doesn't matter what fabric you put in them, they are still gorgeous. So I told you she has projects in the book, right? And so she has them at the back. So she starts off with one of them. She talks about all the different tools that you need. And again, keep in mind, this is handwork. So she talks about that. She talks about uh, different types of thread you can use as well. And you can see this one here on the first ones. You can either make it as a, you know, like a quilt or you could put it in a shadow box. So these I think would be absolutely stunning as artwork on walls, right? Because they are works of art. Here's another one that she's put into a hoop, for example. Again, just fascinating. Here's one where she has lots of different fabrics going on. You can see the back of these, okay? So here's all the quilting that's going on, all the stitching, I should say, that she's done to put these all together. So they're all folded pieces and then sewn on a circular format onto a foundation. I like this one too, where you've got a background and then you've got the different ones attached as well. So that's quite interesting too. Lots of different things you can do with these, right? I can see lots of different things to do with them. And here's a close-up of the stitching that she's done on this afterwards. So she's done some uh, additional hand quilting here to give it a decorative touch, right? So like big stitch quilting, we would call that. And there's a picture of Betty herself. So if you are interested in historical quilts and you like to do handwork, and I'm still trying to figure out if I could do this by machine, <laughs> You want to take a look at Pinecone Quilts, very fascinating book and the projects are absolutely stunning. Make sure you check up above or in the description below to get your own copy of Pinecone Quilts. Thanks so much for watching today. I hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, please give it a thumbs up. Remember to subscribe and hit the bell so you'll be notified the next time I release a new video. And for more helpful quilting information, please go to my website at www.chatterboxquilts.com.